This screencast covers Module 5, Lesson 13, again, largely based upon the practice set, but we also line up uh, those practice set word problems with similar word problems in the homework so that you can easily apply what we show you in the practice set to the homework. We're going to continue multiplying mixed numbers. All right, we have uh, a couple problems here, and we have a number of strategies we can use. We can use the rectangular model, we can distribute, or we can just uh, work with, uh, turn our mix, uh, mixed numbers into improper fractions, or as in the case of A here, we have already have uh, a pair of improper fractions. Now when I look at this problem, I could turn them into mixed numbers if I like, but I'm looking at these numbers here. I'm seeing 5 fourths times 12 fifths. And I'm noticing that I have a 5 in my numerator and a 5 in my denominator. I have a 4 in this denominator, a 12 in this, and that uh, is going to make things a lot easier. So let's uh, start that problem out just simply using our improper fractions. So that's the same as 5 times 12 over 4 times 5. Well, we can find common multiples now, can't we? 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And 4 divided by 4 is 1. And the answer is 3. Our unit is 3 kilometers squared. In this case, I could change them into improper fractions, but I have, I'll be working with some pretty big numbers, and I'd like to avoid that. So I am going to work with my rectangular model. So we'll set up a rectangle, and we will take 4 and decompose it into 4 and 1 fifth, partition our model. 16 decomposes to 16 plus 1 half, decompose once again. Now we'll do our multiplying. I have 16 times 4, that's 64. I have 16 times 1 fifth. That's 16 fifths. And that becomes 3 and 1 fifth. I'll multiply 4 times 1 half, which is 4 halves, which becomes 2. And finally, 1 fifth times 1 half is 1 tenth. Make that 5 look more like a 5. Now I'll find the sum of my partial products. I have 64 plus 3 and 1 fifth plus 2 plus 1 tenth. We'll now add the whole number portion. 64 plus 3 plus 2 is 69 plus 1 fifth plus 1 tenth. And 1 fifth is easily converted to one ten, uh, to tenths because 5 times 2 is 10, so it's 69 plus 2 tenths plus one-tenth equals sixty-nine and three-tenths. We'll do one more example. Okay, uh, here I have uh, four uh, and one-third yards times five and two-thirds yards. So we're going to just kind of look at some possibilities here. Let's see what this looks like when we change it into uh, an improper fraction. Four times three is twelve, plus one is thirteen. So I have thirteen-thirds times 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17 thirds. I don't see any place where I can find common factors here. I could do it that this way. I could simply multiply 13 times 17, and then 3 times 3, and I get my 9, and I can simply divide. We'll, we'll do it that way. We'll do it the other way as well. So I have 17 times 13, and I get 51 here. 17, put in that 0, and we have 221, and that's 221 divided by 9, so we have 221 divided by 9, we get 18, I subtract, I get 4, bring down my 1, 9 times 4 is 36, 
I subtract and I get 5 and that is 24 and 5 ninths. Let's do the area model. Should come up with the same answer. 4 and 1 third decomposes to 4 plus 1 third partition. 5 and 2 thirds partition. Multiply 5 times 4, we get 20. 5 times 1 third is 5 thirds equals 1 and 2 thirds. 4 times 2 thirds is 8 thirds, which equals 2 and 2 thirds. And 1 third times 2 thirds is 2 ninths. Let's find the sum. 20 plus 1 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 2 thirds plus 2 ninths. Find the sum of the whole numbers and we get 23 plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 ninths. 2 thirds and 2 thirds is 4 thirds. Plus 2 ninths. That equals 24 plus 1 third plus 2 ninths. And again, we can easily convert our 1 third into ninths. So I have 24 plus, well, 3 times 3 is ninths, so 3 times 1. 1 third becomes 3 ninths plus 2 ninths equals 24 and 5 ninths. And of course we should have our unit yard squared. Okay, I have a pair of problems here. The first one is from the problem set. The second is from the homework. Again, these are parallel problems. They are uh, the same procedure, you know, just simply different numbers. Let's read. Julie is cutting out rectangles out of fabric to make a quilt. If the rectangles are 2 and 3 fifths inches wide and 3 and 2 thirds inches long, what is the area of four such rectangles. Okay, so we have to figure out the area of one of these rectangles. Then we need to figure out the area of four. Again, we could uh, either do the area model or we could do the uh, turning them into improper fractions. I'm just going to look at these numbers and see how they work out. So two and uh, two and three fifths becomes 13 fifths. And Three and th two thirds becomes eleven thirds. I don't see any uh, opportunities here to uh, find common factors. I could do it this way, and multiplying by eleven is easy. And we divide that by fifteen, and we can now find our answer for the area of one. I'm also going to show the rectangular model. That must go in about 9 times. 9 times 15 is 135. 135. 143 minus 135 is 8. So we have 9 and 8 fifteenths. Again, the uh, rectangular model. We have 2 and 3 fifths. We have three and two thirds partition. We get a six, get nine fifths, which is one and four fifths. And two times two thirds is four thirds, which equals to one and one third. And three fifths times two thirds is six fifteenths. Find the sum. Six plus one and four fifths plus one and one third plus six fifteenths. Let's take out our holes and we get eight plus four fifths plus one third plus six fifteenths.
I'm just going to go and find a common denominator here, and that's 15, so that's pretty simple. It usually tur uh, turns out that way with these rectangular models. So 4 fifths becomes 12 fifteenths, and 1 third becomes 5 fifteenths, then we just add our 6 fifteenths. We find the sum. We have 8 plus 23 fifteenths, and that becomes 8, or excuse me, 9 and 8 fifteenths. So either way we do it, we get the same answer. But we're not done yet, because now we need to multiply by 4. So I have 4 times 9 and 8 fifteenths. Uh, again, I have a number of choices here. I'm going to simply use the distributive property. I'm going to say 9 times, or 4 times 9 and 8 fifteenths is the same as 4 times 9 plus 4 times 8 fifteenths. Here we've shown you all of the strategies that we can use. I don't recommend a lot of you do this. Uh, especially when we're multiplying two mixed numbers, it's very easy to get confused. 4 times 9 is 36, and 4 times 8 fifteenths is 32 fifteenths, and that becomes 36 plus 2, and 2 fifteenths, and the answer becomes 38 and 2 fifteenths, and that would be our area for those four objects. Now we can look at the homework one as well. We can see that that's largely the same kind of problem. So we have to look at this. Uh, Chris is making a table top uh, with some leftover tiles. This time instead of four tiles we have nine tiles. And instead of uh, 2 and 3 fifths by 3 and 2 thirds, we have 3 and 1 eighth and 2 and 3 fourths. Same procedure. We need to find the area of one of these tiles, and then we have to multiply that area times the 9. Uh, again, there's I outlined several techniques that we could use. I highly recommend the uh, rectangular model, especially if you're confused and find it difficult to choose among the options. This one always works. It works well. Uh, it's also a great workout in terms of multiplying fractions and adding fractions, which will do wonders for getting you ready for your state test. The next problem is fairly complex. And the slide after that is the homework problem. I'll be honest, I think that the homework problem is a bit much. I sat down myself, I went through it, and it's a very long, laborious procedure. This one's a little bit easier uh, because of the numbers. But nonetheless, this is a tough one. I'll go through it with you, though. So let's get started. First, I need to find the area of this lawn. And we can see that the dimensions are two, 24 and 1 half by 24 and 1 half, so we have a square. So I am going to use my rectangular model. 24 and 1 half decomposed. And I need to multiply 24 times 24. We get 96, we get 48, we add our partial products, and I get 576. Now I multiply 24 times 1 half, and I get 12. 24 times 1 half is 12. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. We'll find the sum. 579, excuse me, 76, I miscopied there, and 12 plus 576, 12 plus 12 is 24, and I get 600, 
that I need to add my one fourth. So I have six hundred and one fourth. So that's my total area here. Now what do I need to do? I need to subtract. I need to subtract the full house. I need to subtract this three yard by one yard uh, walkway. And then I need to subtract the uh, area of the pool. So what do we have? We have a hole of six hundred and four one fourth. And we have that pool. And that's... Uh, 16 yards square, so we don't have to multiply that. That's pretty simple, right? They just give us that. And we have the 1 by 3. That's pretty simple, too. 1 times 3 is 3, so that's uh, 3 yards squared. The only thing we have to calculate is this pool house here. And then we want to find what's left over. And that would represent the yard here, the gray area. All right, so let's get down to work with that. Again, make a little space. I have, once again, seven and one half times two and one half. I'm going to change these into improper fractions for variety. So I get 15 halves times five halves equals 75 divided by 4, 75 divided by 4, I get a 1, subtract 7 minus 4, get a 3, bring down the 5, and that goes in 8 times, we get a 32, and we have 3 left over, so we have 18 and 3 fourths, so this is 18 and 3 fourths. So I'm going to find the sum of these, then subtract it from my 600 one fourth. 16 plus 3 plus 18 plus 3 fourths. We find the sum of the whole numbers and we get 37 and 3 fourths. Now we simply need to subtract. So we have 600, whoop, get the right tool here, 600 and 1 fourth minus 37 and 3 fourths. We'll subtract the holes first and we get 563 and 1 fourth minus 3 fourths. Now we have to uh, do our little operation here. We have 563 plus 1 fourth minus 3 fourths. Making a little more space, we have 563 minus 3 fourths plus 1 fourth equals 562 and 1 fourth plus 1 fourth equals 562 and 1 half and those are square yards. Um, the next one is a lot more difficult. I'm going to discuss it, and we'll, uh, hopefully your teacher won't assign it. This is the same sort of problem, but we're not given the uh, square yards for any part like we did there. We don't have simple, easy numbers to work with. Absolutely everything involves a fraction. So we have the whole floor is a, a mixed number. We are given a rectangle in the middle, which again is a mixed number, whereas in the example from the practice set, you were given the area of one of these rectangles. And again, this little portion here, we have a mixed number times a whole number, and again, a mixed number times a whole number. This is a very, very difficult problem. I'm either going to simplify it by giving some parts of it to the students, or I just won't assign it, or I may assign it as extra credit. But again, the procedure that you saw in the previous problem will apply here. Hopefully, though, your teacher has looked at this and has made a decision as to whether to assign it or not, because it's, it took me a good 15-20 minutes to work through.